you all to know that like, we make up a very small representative representation of what mix looks like. Um, we're all very light skinned. Um, mix can look a lot of different ways. Um, each of us has our own experience being white passing um, and having that privilege of being able to enter white spaces and be seen as white, and I think that's really important. Anytime I meet a stranger, like anytime I meet someone for the first time in any kind of like any type of environment, social environment, or just somebody that's new to me, they're like trying to guess or they're like, what are you? Like that's kind of like a common question or they'll just guess. I, I feel like no one else really asked me anything else. It's never specific. It's just like, what are you? And then a lot of the time it's like after a debate that's like about me, I'll find that people are like, what are you? After like thinking that I was like something else. I don't know. It happens a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, the perfect microaggression is your example. And they actually have a nice YouTube video on that exact same conversation. Um, what are you? No, what are you really? Or where are you from? No, where are you from from? And it's conversations that people will have and questions that people will have um, that uh, they don't realize, well, I hope they don't realize, <laughs> that they are insinuating uh, based upon what they see or what they perceive in you. My parents have had like weird things happen because of like my being biracial. So like that has felt like for my mom, who's Mexican and her, like I'm white passing as a person, I think most of the time. And my mom, my mom's skin is like much darker than mine. Um, and when I was a kid, like we would be at the park and people would ask her if she was my nanny and that sort of thing. So like that was really weird growing up and like didn't really understand it when I was growing up. Um, and also, like, she's been asked if, like, I was adopted even, where, like, I think that we kind of do look alike, but it's just, like, the fact that our skin, like, tones are so different that people are like, you're obviously not related. <laughs> so that's been weird, but, yeah. I wouldn't call it, like, oppression, but I would say that it's been strange. Like, if, like, the other, a couple, like, a year ago, I got a job, like, I was a hostess at a restaurant, and, like, you know, just making conversation with the people like in the kitchen or something, they'll be like, oh yeah, what are you? Because, you know, you see people every day and you don't know them that well and it's like you're trying to kind of get to know them and so they're like, they're like, they can't really guess. It's hard, so. Yeah, the one that like has stuck out to me the most was I was meeting a friend of mine's parents for the first time and um, I was there and they were having a conversation about like what I was um, and they had like her mom and her dad had decided that I was like Hawaiian or Puerto Rican and then they asked me what I was but I had like heard the whole conversation and I just felt really like really strange. <laughs> I was uncomfortable. Yeah, not fun. Um, it's kind of strange because I feel like I'm accepted from both sides of my family because I'm not super like Mexican or super white. Um, and so it's kind of like, I think the acceptance has, has made it so that I feel like a separate thing even. Um, because I'm not super immersed in either, like, in one or the other. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that acceptance is really good, and I'm so grateful for it. And it's also been, like, a shaping of my cultural, cultural identity because I'm like, okay, well, I'm kind of this, like, mush. Like, I feel like a mush sometimes. Um, and so that's been kind of weird. But definitely, I'm grateful for, like, the acceptance, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I tell people that my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving because on one side, you know, that side we had the panin, the tostones, and all the Spanish food you could ever want. And then on my mom's side, we had the kielbasa, the pierogies, the sauerkraut. And I tell people this, if you're dying on Thanksgiving Day, you do not want to call me. I'm not moving because this is the best of the world, having these two foods in front of me. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to call. When I answer the phone, sorry, I'll be at your funeral. Sometimes I feel like I'm not Filipino enough 
that's one thing I don't, I wish I was more um, in touch with my Filipino side because it's, it's, it's easy to grow up in an American culture and kind of ignore that culture that you're, you're um, like, um, your minority culture. So it's kind of easier to just ignore it and so I kind of did that and I don't feel, and then if I meet people from the Filipino community and then it's sort of like hard to say, yeah, I'm Filipino but I don't speak Tagalog. So I don't, but I want to learn Tagalog, I really do, because every time I every time I think about it, I'm just like, I should really embrace my culture. But I feel, I still feel accepted. I, so from my Caucasian side, I feel accepted. Um, they might not really know as much, but they mostly embrace any kind of cultural difference. There have been times where I like, rejected one side of myself and like more embraced another side and I think that in order to feel like more full in order to feel um, like I accepted myself on both ends um, like I needed to kind of like catch myself and um, and make sure that I was kind of like indulging or like teaching myself and like immersing myself in both um, and not feeling like, oh, well, I'm not enough of this, so I'm gonna just like be the other one, that sort of thing. And then another thing was um, having friends and people around me that weren't gonna like ignore the fact that I was multiracial um, and wasn't like, they weren't going to ignore it and they weren't gonna criticize it or like make it weird. So I think people who just like, our understanding of and aware of like all of that was important for me. Yeah. One thing I feel like a lot of multicultural people um, have in common is their ability to adapt, and I like I take pride in that because um, I try to relate to everyone and. I'm not saying that's special to multicultural, anybody can be relatable, anybody can adapt, be easily adaptable, but because of our multicultural heritage, we've had to. I think a pro and a con actually is the way that I feel that I have an experience that a lot of other people don't have. So I feel like I have a very unique, just weird things that have happened, um, just said to me because of it, or, or just, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that it's a pro and a con that I have a very unique experience in that way. And also, I think, like, just physically, I'm happy that I have, like, both sides. I think it makes me more interesting, um, which is, like, a shallow thing, but, yeah. you know. Um, the interesting thing about um, where I grew up is I grew up in projects that was all black. All, I was the only white face in the projects, right? And so... For me, I wanted to blend in. I wanted to be part of, I wanted to be just like everyone else. Um, I would say for me, uh, there have been times where I like rejected one side of myself and like more embraced another side and I think that in order to feel like more full in order to feel um, like I accepted myself on both ends um, like I needed to kind of like catch myself just and be appreciative be appreciative of everyone in your family history and just everyone has their own story and so everyone's unique and so just I would just appreciate it and use it as a way to teach you how to accept other people and understand that everybody has a story, everybody has something unique about them so you can see the best in everyone.